Well, good morning and welcome to our daily marketplace devotion. Uh, today is July the 12th and it is a Monday. So as usual, you know, Mondays are always getting back into the grind of things and uh, we getting over the weekend of just having uh, days to ourselves to enjoy and just, um, you know, be out and enjoy maybe some of the, the, the sun. Uh, but today, you know, it's back to back to the grind, back to work. So I pray that you all are having a good day so far. Today, our daily devotion is going to be talking about being crucified with Christ. And, you know, we all can learn something from that devotion or from this devotion today because, you know, we all have some things in our life that needs to be put to death. You know, and, uh, being crucified, you know, and crucifying that flesh, it is not easy. Why? Because the flesh want what the flesh want. You know, let's just, just be real with each other and honest. You know, we want to do what pleases us. And, and, you know, self is always, you know, our first priority sometimes. Uh, but to crucify uh, ourselves, you know, and to, and to crucify that flesh and to be crucified with Christ, sometimes it don't always feel good. Most times, just to be honest, most times it don't feel good. And so that's what our devotion is going to be talking about today. And so um, we're going to be coming from the Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to read the first three verses because it is the first verse, which is our key verse. And so it says here in Ephesians, it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear, dear children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. You know, Jesus Christ, he gave his life for us. And so because he did that, you know, we are to be we we ought to be able to just walk in love with one another. Then our third verse here, last verse says, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. And of course, you know, sometimes we fall in, in, into that category. You know, this week, you know, I uh, had, uh, I've had some issues with covetousness myself. You know, covetousness, you know, let's just, let's just, just, just look at that word for a minute. Covet, covetousness. Uh, let me just spell it for you because I may not be pronouncing it just quite right. But it's C-O-V-E-T-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -E -E covetousness. And what I, 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 when I was looking it up, just to make sure I have a, a good definition of it for you when I come on today, it says, uh, covetousness is, uh, it is uh, something that lead, well, it's desiring. It is desiring uh, a strong desire, especially uh, for material possessions. So it says having a, it means to have a strong desire, especially for material possessions. And um, and, and, and I'm not, I'm going to say that it's not so bad to desire, you know, things, you know, we all have desires. We all have desires, you know, to have uh, a better this or that, whether it be a better home, a better car, better furniture, you know, we all have those desires. But I think that the fine line and when it moves into uh, covetousness is when it leads to stealing, uh, adultery, you know, you, you're covering, coveting somebody else's wife and or and, and then it moves you into, you know, having an affair with her, an adultery. Are you coveting you know, me, I'll uh, just use myself as an example. I'll be a little transparent. Uh, I was, uh, my neighbor got uh, some turf grass in their backyard. Now, where we live, they put the worst kind of back, uh, grass in the backyard. In the front yard, they did pretty good. They did St. Augustine, which is beautiful. But in the backyard, I guess because they didn't want to put sprinklers in the backyards in this community, they put that Bahalia grass, which is like cow pasture grass. So when it is hot, it just totally kills it if you're not watering it every day. And so we have the worst backyards. 
And so I'm having some landscaping done and um, and uh, I had planned to do it, you know, probably after, um, you know, the second or third year, which we're in our third year. So this is the, about the timing. But my neighbor got that turf grass and I hadn't planned to do turf now. I had planned to just get St. Augustine in the back. But turf, I didn't really know much about that type of grass. I know it's fake grass and you don't have to worry about, you know, paying out for a lawn service every month and you don't have to worry about upkeep of it and it kind of cut down on, on bugs and stuff like that because they don't like the fake grass and his looks so beautiful. And I say, you know, I think I want that. Uh, and so, um, and, and so I desire to do that. Now, what, um, what I believe Covington would, would be if 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 I desired it to the point that it cost me to lie in order to get it or to steal or to cheat in some kind of way, uh, then that's when I believe it would move into Covington coming to this but just because you know I saw something that I could afford as well to do and um is, is something that I desire to do well if, if you can afford it if if it's something that you like and and you know you do your research and it's something that fits your budget and fits you then I don't believe there's anything wrong with seeing something that someone have and you desire to have it if you can you know do that without it moving you into uh, doing something that would be a sin. So I think that's the fine line with that. And so, um, and so we decided that that's what we're going to do as well. And I'm very happy about that. But, um, I said all that to say, um, kind of give an example of covingtonness. You know, when you look out and you see something that someone else have and you desire it to the point that where it leads you into doing something that is not right are not righteous in order to obtain it. So I believe that's what that would be. And so, uh, and, and a lot of times um, when we can't uh, uh, afford something or we can't have something because it may not be a, a matter of you having to pay money for it. It just may be that, you know, it's something that doesn't belong to you like somebody else's wife, you know, <laughs> then we have to crucify that flesh. We have to pray and ask the Lord to help you know, uh, us to crucify that flesh. We can't allow jealousy. We can't allow bitterness. We can't allow anger. We can't allow those uh, emotions to overtake us to where it moves us into sin in order to obtain it. So I hope I did a, a good job of, of explaining that. So I'm going to read our little short story that goes with this today. It says here, being crucified with Christ, the story is told of a man who glanced at the obituary column in his local newspaper. To his surprise, he saw his own name, indicating that he had just died. At first glance, he laughed about it. <laughs> but soon the telephone calls began to ring and stunned friends and acquaintances called to inquire and to offer their sympathy. Finally, in irritation, he called the newspaper editor and angrily reported that even though he had been reported dead in the obituary column, he was very much alive. <laughs> the editor was apologetic and embarrassed, to say the least. <laughs> then, in a flash of inspiration, he said, Don't worry, sir. Uh, I'll make it right tomorrow. I'll put your name in the birth columns. <laughs> This may sound like merely a humorous incident, but it is also a spiritual parable. Not until we have allowed ourselves, our old selves, to be nailed to the cross and to die can our new selves be born again and emerge to grow up into the likeness of Christ. The Bible is marvelously true, and you he made a lie who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's what God it says in Ephesians, the second chapter and the first verse. And you, meaning us, he made alive when we was once dead in our, in our own sins. Christ Jesus, when we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, he made us alive again. Therefore, it says, be imitators of God as dear children. So when our focus and when we keep our eyes on Christ, 
Even though there may be things that we desire that we can't have at the moment, because you know, when we pray for things, you know, he always answers us and it's either yes, no, or not now. And so if it's something that you're desiring that, that, um, maybe he's saying not now, then if we keep our eyes focused on him, if we keep our desires pure before him and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives of changing us from the inside and out, then he will give us the desires of our heart, even if it means changing those desires to be something more of what is in line with what God desires for us. <laughs> So I hope that this Bible study helps you today. The thought that I want to leave with you today is as children of God, we can both obey his commands and copy his behavior. As children of God, we should be having Christ-like behavior and character, knowing that we have been raised to imitate our Heavenly Father and no better person or no better uh, uh, one to imitate is our Heavenly Father. And I thank God so much for his love. I thank him so much for his peace. And Father God, uh, this being the first day of the week, as we leave this daily devotion, I pray for all of those this week that may be facing challenges, Father God. Maybe they're dealing with some uh, some oppression or depression because of you know seeing others uh, have and 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 then it seems like they have not you know uh, and sometimes that can be hard to deal with when you work so hard and you strive for for things but Father I pray that you will have them to look to you have them to look to you and let their joy be filled in you for you Father God said that. Christ in us is our hope, is the hope of glory. And so I pray that this week be a blessed week for each and every one that views this daily devotion, that they will prosper and be in good health even as their souls prosper. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So thank you so much. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe and uh, this devotion today on the YouTube channel, which is the prayer channel with Odessa Trice. And until tomorrow, mm, smooches.